I'm about to spend the next 24 hours making a Scratch game, and if I can't finish it by then, it gets deleted forever. But why? Nowadays, I've been watching more YouTube shorts and playing more video games than I usually would. So I've been thinking, to give my brain a break, I need to do something that, you know, maybe promotes computational thinking and problem-solving skills, creative teaching and learning, self-expression and collaboration and equity and computing. Yeah. <laughs> So, in this video, over the next 24 hours, I'm going to be creating a Scratch game, all while not being allowed to use any outside apps, to see if Scratch can fix my brain, before it's too late. Okay, hello everyone, right now it is 3 o'clock which marks the start of this challenge. So our 24 hours are going to end at exactly 3 p.m. tomorrow. So we really do not have that much time to create our game. And now you are probably wondering, what game are we gonna spend the next 24 hours making? Well, it's time for you to find out what that game is gonna be right now literally right now. So here's the idea for this game. You are basically a security worker for a museum, and you are looking at your computer. You hear reports of suspects who could be thieves, and you have to try and find them in a crowd of people. If these suspects pass by you undetected, or you select the wrong person, you lose. I think it's pretty unique and simple enough, so let's just get started. I began by creating the room where you would be looking through the security cameras from. I drew up a little brick wall for the background. I'm not gonna lie, this took quite some time as I had to draw everything manually, but I was happy with the end result. After this, I started creating the actual computer and the desk that it was on top of, and since this was all quite simple, I think I did a good job. But at this point, I ran into a problem. I would need to display things on the computer, but this could be difficult because I would need to make sure that nothing went outside the frame of the screen. This made me think for some time, but after a little while, I came up with a genius solution. So basically, instead of putting the security camera footage on the front layer, we would create a hole in the bricks and computers and put the camera footage on the bottom layer. That way, sprites wouldn't go outside the frame of the computer like I I was worrying about earlier. I felt really smart after coming up with this, I can't lie. After this, I also added a red dot to the top right of the screen to indicate that you were watching live footage. Although it didn't add much to the game, it was a nice touch. The next thing that I did was start to add in the people that would walk down the street. Later on, we would need more variety in people, but for now, I just drew a simple guy and added some code to create a bunch of clones that moved forward. But while playtesting this, I tried to think about how it would feel if I needed to click on one of the suspects and realize that since the people moved too fast, even if I spotted them, it It'd be a struggle to click on them. So I decided that for this game, I would make it so that when you hit the spacebar, you could pause the footage and select the person. And when the footage is paused, you have three seconds to click the suspect or else you lose. This would be a lot of coding, so for now, I only added in the pausing feature. I made up my mind to do the rest later. The next thing that I added was a feature that made it so that the people didn't walk in straight lines and instead swayed left and right a bit. This added another layer of difficulty to our game, and I think that it makes things feel more natural and less robotic. After that, I wanted to make some more art for the game, so I made three hairstyles, three shirt colors, and three pant colors that would be randomly mixed and matched to create the random people who are walking in the street. The hair colors are brown, black, and blonde. The shirt colors are red, green, and orange. And the pants colors are blue, white, and gray. This makes for a total of 27 possible unique combinations. The next thing that I wanted to code was a system that would automatically mix and match them. However, I couldn't get to that because it was time to eat dinner. After eating dinner, I coded in a system that randomized the people. I did this by adding in three clones for each person. One for the head, one for the shirt, and one for the pants. This took a while, but I eventually got it working, and I was happy about that. I also made it so that the game chooses a random combo of hair and clothing for the person who will be the suspect. An image of the suspect would be displayed on the top corner of the screen, so the player could always know what the suspect looks like. At this point, the game was coming together, but I was getting tired, so I decided that I would work on it more tomorrow. At this point in the 24 hours, I had no idea just how crazy this game would turn out and how this challenge would come to an end. But just like hatching a suspect in a crowd of people, learning to code isn't easy. And if you ever end up getting a career in coding in the future, then I want to tell you about Simply Learn, the sponsor of this video. Simply Learn has professional online courses in topics such as data analysis, business, and of course, programming. They offer structured, career-focused tech and business programs for learners aiming to apply their skills in professional environments. One of their courses is the Microsoft AI Engineer Program, delivered by Simply Learn in partnership with Microsoft. In this course, you will learn Python essentials, machine learning, deep 
learning, LLMs, and so much more. Additionally, Simply Learn has a hands-on learning system that teaches you practical implementation and not just theory. In this course, there's a mix of live online classes and self-paced modules taught by real professionals. In this program, you get 140 plus hours of training and learn from industry experts through interactive sessions. Upon completion, you receive a program certificate from Simply Learn in partnership with Microsoft. Simply Learn is only intended for serious learners who want to grow their career in tech. If you are interested, you can check out this program through the link in my description and explore further. I'd also like to say a quick thank you to Simply Learn for supporting this channel and the video that you're watching right now. Hello everyone, welcome to the end of our day today. I think we did like a pretty good job today. Created basically the core mechanics of the game. So tomorrow, what I think we're going to be doing is just adding in some polish. Just finishing up the game, finishing touches. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I said see you tomorrow already. Just go. Just go. I said just go. I said just go. Hello, hello, welcome to day two. I kind of woke up late today. It's like 8.40 right now, which is not good. But I think we just need to finish up the game. That's really all we need to do. This morning, I kind of wanted to like check my messages and like look at YouTube Studio to see how my videos are doing, but I couldn't really do that. But it, I mean, it's nothing too big. To start off this day, I realized that since the suspect was just in the corner of the screen, some players may not notice it. So I made a little animation when the game starts that puts it in the middle of the screen and then makes it glide to the top left. I thought this could help some players out, so I was happy that I added this in. The next thing that I wanted to do was make it so that the player could actually catch the suspect and click on them. But the first step in doing this was actually making the suspect spawn in the first place, as we hadn't even made him appear in the crowd. This took a little while, but I eventually got it done. However, I also noticed a problem at this time. Sometimes, someone who looks exactly like the suspect would spawn, but it wasn't the suspect. This was because sometimes, just by chance, a person would randomly generate with the exact same hair, shirt, and pants as the suspect so they would be indistinguishable from the actual suspect, but the game would still tag them as another random person. I fixed this by making it impossible for people to look like the suspect, and this solved our problems. Okay, but now it was time to actually make it so that you could pause the security camera footage and click on the suspect. So I made a quick prototype, but since I didn't really have a lot of time, I couldn't do anything more than just make the guy say hello when you found him. Hello everyone. So basically on my last video, I said, I have an offer for all of you guys. For every subscriber that I get on this video, I will be doing one sit up. So far we got around 950 subscribers. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that all right now, but I'm gonna try to see how many sit ups I can do right now. One, two, 16, 17, five, six, 12 16 Later in the day, I started coding in the 3 second timer that activates when you pause the security footage. I decided to put it in the center of the screen so that it was visible and also added a sense of intensity. But I realized that after the timer was up, we didn't have a loose screen to switch to. So I made a screen for when you miss the thief, when the timer was up, or when you clicked on the wrong guy, as well as a screen for when you win and catch the suspect. After that, I added in the code for these screens, which made our game work pretty nicely. However, there were still two big problems that I saw with this game. Number one, we didn't have a way to restart the game, and number two, we didn't have a score system. I fixed these both pretty quickly. Starting with making the game restartable, I made it so that if you hit space, the game would go all the way back to the beginning and pick another suspect for you to find. Secondly, to make the score system, I just created a variable that increased by one whenever you caught a suspect. However, this was kind of ugly because it was just the default scratch variable. I knew I needed to fix this, but I decided to put it off for now. That's because I was going to livestream me finishing this game up. I honestly don't know why, but I just felt like doing this. I guess you could make the argument that this is breaking the rules of this challenge because I'm using technology, but I really don't care. This is my channel and not yours. Hello chat, hello everyone. So this challenge is about me making a scratch game for 24 hours. I, I can't do anything but scratch for those 24 hours. So I can't watch YouTube, I can't use Discord, I can't do anything. I mean, I'm kind of cheating right now by streaming, but I think it's okay. And I've created a little bit of a game here and we're gonna try to finish this today. So we have the main core concepts, but what I think would be cool is if we have, instead of just this random like scratch variable, we have an actual custom variable score. So we're gonna make a new sprite to do that. And let's just get to work, I guess. Our score is now working. That is great. Viper, this game will surpass every game that has ever existed and ever will exist. 
Thank you. So now we need to add kind of like a main menu, but I'm thinking instead of a main menu, what we could do is we could just keep the screen here and then have messages displayed on the screen. Let's make a new sprite for our main menu messages. We're basically going to make it say, we need your help, press space to continue, there are thieves trying to sneak into the museum, you are the security guard, so when we tell you to find a person, find them at all costs, unless you want to have our museum shut down. Understood? Okay, let's see if this works now. We need your help, there are thieves trying to sneak into the museum, you are security guard, so when we tell you to find a person, find them at all costs, unless you want to have our museum shut down. And then now we have this guy over here. Yeah. So we're basically done with the game, guys. Like we did it. We, we actually just finished the game. So I guess this is our game. And I think this is actually complete now. Yeah, that's it. This is the stream. Hope you all enjoyed. All right. Good night, everyone. Good day. Whatever time it is for you. Yeah, that's it. Bye. But before I show you the results of this challenge, let me just show you the game that we spent the last 24 hours making. So it's been like two weeks since those 24 hours that you just watched ended. And you might be wondering, did these 24 hours have any like lasting effect on me? It'd be cool if I could say it, yes, but realistically nothing really changed um, in 24 hours. So that's what I want to say. And yeah. All right. Yeah, just have a good day. Really appreciate the support you guys have been giving. It's just crazy. Um, yeah. In this video, I made the entire game by myself. But what if instead of using my own ideas, I just stole ideas from other scratchers? Watch the video on screen right now to find out what happened.